everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lacey from Ghost Blogger, and I'm your content director and secret weapon when it comes to building a blog that builds your business. And today I have the distinct pleasure to introduce to you Jared Morris, if you don't know him. He's the director of content for Copyblogger Media, and so that means he manages the day-to-day -day operations of Copyblogger.com, and he runs their super cool podcast, The Lead, of which I am a big fan. And um, I met Jared in person for the first time at the Authority Intensive uh, in 2014, which I really, really enjoyed. And uh, But he talks regularly about leadership as it relates to content creation and distribution, which is one of the main reasons I wanted to chit-chat with him. And the other main reason was because he has a pretty cool side project called Primility. Am I saying that right, Jared? Yes. Yes, you are. That's okay. perfect. <laughs> Yeah, so why don't you start by telling us what is Primility and how you came up with the idea. I don't even remember what the specific impetus was, but it just dawned on me that pride and humility are these two kind of opposing ideals that we're always struggling with. You know, sometimes we are we feel really confident and we know that, that we can do the job, but we almost do that to the detriment of understanding how much we need other people to help us. But then other times we you know, don't necessarily feel qualified and we feel like someone else could, could do a better job so much so that we don't even try. And so, you know, either one of those different mindsets or those different feelings it either leads you to doing too much on your own or sitting on the sidelines and doing nothing. And so that just seemed like kind of a, a way to put a specific on this somewhat nebulous idea of balance. Because we talk about balance, but what does it really mean? And so for me, it really helped to look at it from the standpoint of these two specific emotions or feelings. And so whenever I got that feeling of being out of balance, instead of just saying, I feel out of balance, I was able to look at it, okay, I'm either feeling too prideful right now or I'm too humble. You know, I'm either, you know, not getting an, enough help from other people. I'm not caring enough about other people's interests and what they can do, or I'm, you know, just being too hard on myself and not thinking I'm capable enough. And so thinking about it in those two ways and realizing which end of the spectrum I was on and then being able to kind of pull it back toward the middle really was just something that helped me out a lot. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your writing voice when it comes to all the different projects you manage and, and have you given a lot of thought to that and how they're the same and how they're different? Yes, and I think you have to be intentional with it. Um, you know, because the way that I write for Copyblogger is going to be different from the way that I write on Primility and different than how I used to write on Midwest Sports Fans. And, you know, and I think because it comes down to the audience. Um, because I think really, you know, when you look at your writing voice, you can look at that within the construct of Primility as well. Because, you know, you have to, number one, just to get out there and write words. I mean, to, to put yourself out there, to bleed onto a page and put it out there for someone to read. You know, you have to have pride in that you have something to say, that you have something worthwhile to offer. And you do. Whoever you are listening to this, you do, because you had unique experiences that are also shared by other people. They're unique because you went through them and you have your perspective on them, but yet we're all humans and really a lot of our experiences are the same, especially people in the same industry. And so you have a unique perspective, but it's then important to understand with humility that it's all about the reader. You know, it's all about, it's not necessarily about what you want to say, it's what, what do you have to say, what experience can you share that now helps your reader, that helps solve a problem, or that, you know, that does something that puts them in a better position when they're done. And so I think from a voice standpoint, you know, it, and there's lots of different elements that make up your writing voice, you know, your tone and your style and, and the topic that you're going to cover. I think you've got to look at all of those experiences that you've had, those important things that you have to say, and then understand your audience, figure out what they're afraid of, what they're scared of, what problems they have, and then it's kind of like a Venn diagram and see where the intersection is. I think a lot of people, especially beginning bloggers, and, and I know my audience tends to consist of business people who are getting into blogging because they know they need to, but mm -hmm. they're not necessarily maybe a writer, and they get really scared of the idea of a voice because they don't really know what that means. So can you talk to us a little bit about what you feel like that means as a writer and, and how someone goes about developing it? The first element is put something out there that you're proud of mm -hmm. and, and just get it out there because you, the feedback loop can never start until you put stuff 
you know, put things out there. And then you just have to see what people respond to. Over time, you get much better at being able to predict responses. You get better understanding whatever the audience is so you can create content that will, that will work better for them. Mm -hmm. But that first step toward overcoming the initial fear that everybody has is put your toe in the water. Take the first step. Whatever metaphor you want to use, you've just got to get that piece of content out there. Um, but it may help you to really put in that time of studying, working hard, editing to make sure it's something that you're proud of so that when so you can put it out there with confidence. There's a big buzzword, I think, right now, especially online, about authenticity. So I wanted to bring that up. And um, how do you define authenticity? And how do you, like, if you're reading a blog, what makes you feel like, yeah, that's that's got authenticity or not? <laughs> Oh, let's perhaps we should start out by talking about what authenticity is not. Okay. And authenticity is not sharing everything. Yes. You no, know, it's not. <laughs> like, you know, none of you listening to this care, you know, about really everything that's happened in my day up to here, right? Ex <laughs> unless something that happened in my day here, you know, can help you solve some kind of problem that you have in your life or, or help you understand something better. So I think authenticity is sharing the parts of yourself, of your story, of your experience that are going to be impactful to somebody else. Talk to me a little bit about where your Primility project is headed. I'm really excited to uh, see what you've got going next for that. I've kind of been making it up as I go. I mean, I know where we're going. 10,000 wristbands. Like, I want 10,000 pictures of people right. wearing this wristband. Yes, you can and, get yours at primality.com. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and and I'll tell you, you know, really, so, I, I mean, I launched that site, like, bought the domain, launched the site back in, I think, 2011, you know, and, and wrote some different content but had no vision for it whatsoever. I mean, there's so much. If you look in the old, old archives, there's just such a random assortment of content in there. But never really, I, I didn't have a vi I didn't know how to explain it. I had no idea how to really create content around the core concept because I didn't really know what the core concept was. I knew what it was but not how to explain it and hadn't really delved into it. You know, I was trying to do it all up here, yeah. forgetting like, go read, go look at the perspectives of other people. And once I started doing that, of course, it really opened up my mind because you see what other smarter people have said and it helps you further your own thinking. And so... You know, so I know that I want to get to 10,000 wristbands because I feel like if we, you know, if we get there, now we'll have a community of people all around this idea. And I think it's a, it's a universal enough idea that it can mean different things to different people, but it's something people can connect on because I think in our own way, we all struggle with that a little bit. You know, we all have places in our lives where we're too prideful and places in our lives where we're, where we're too humble. And so I think we can all learn from each other's perspectives and learn from what history teaches us. Um, and so, I, you know, I just I want to see the content keep going. And I want to not just always be talking about it in these kind of grandiose, qualitative general terms, mm -hmm. but get into specifics. Like, okay, so we got the, these ideals of pride and humility. Great. How does that help me tomorrow? Um. You know, I'm a I'm a work from home mom and a stay at home mom, and balancing that is very challenging. You know, balancing the demands of this little person, uh, mm -hmm. and then the demands of a business that I'm just starting is it's super challenging, and it and it's not unique. I know there's a lot of people that that struggle with that, and that that's their daily daily thing. But that's why it's really resonated with me. I think because the pride and the humility is like. I can't be super mom, but I'm super mom to her. You know what I mean? She thinks I'm great. I, I'm doing an okay job with that little person, but mm -hmm. I can't do everything. I do have to ask for help and, and get it done. Well, you know, when you just go out there and start building up that, that positive momentum slowly but surely, one step at a time, and, and, even, and getting help, you know, you don't have to do it yourself. You know, there are you know, professionals who, you know, you know, if it's writing, you know, there are people who will help you, you know, find your voice or take your words and, and, and help you craft it for an audience until you know how to do it, you mm -hmm. know, and maybe that's not necessarily your skill, but you know you have a message, you know, work with someone who can help you craft that message the right way for the audience. There's that, that is still authentic. Even if you're, even if someone else is editing your words and helping your words, it's still your message. You want to put a message out there that communicates that you care and that you have something to share with them. And so, if you need a little bit of help to do it, 
you're so much better off being humble enough to ask for the help and getting the better message to your audience than just kind of having that that prideful, well, I'm going to do it myself and it has to be me. I really think ultimately you communicate the opposite message that you want. That's not authentic, yeah. or if it is authentic, it's the wrong kind of authenticity. The wrong kind, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the kind you don't want. <laughs>